I remember those days when I was much younger in marriage. It was my preoccupation, my intention to always prove to my wife that I was right. And I had the cerebral power to achieve that, even if I'm wrong. My mother said, if you had read law, we would have, we would have had to pack from this house and leave you. Because even as a child, I could argue. So they, they guided my hands away from law because they knew that the, the terrorism would begin from the house. They, they guided my hands. Are you, are you there? So it was my preoccupation to prove to my wife that I am right. Until I started knowing God deeply. Then I discovered that it was not just outright sin that was filthy in the eyes of God. It was also self, the ways of men. And that was more detest, detestful in his sight. Ah! Hey, I thought I was, I, I scored good records until I started going close. Then I, I knew I needed more cleansing than any man. Oh my. It is not the only, the only the unbeliever that should repent to. As you go close to God, again and again, you will repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I had to repent of, of very, very bitter anger. I had to repent of and, and lay down for his surgery to take it out. As I speak to you, I know that uh, pride has not been dealt with 100% in my life. I know it. But where it is now, it will not obstruct the will of God. <laughs> so in the book of Romans, the goal of consecration is to access the will of God. And the will of God is the meaning of your life upon the face of the earth. It was when I discovered the will of God that it was not God's will for me to be a lecturer, but God's will for me to lecture the scriptures. So I gave myself to the scriptures because I knew that this was the assignment the Lord had for me. Do you know that in the practice of teaching this Bible, I have stood before kings. Do you know, just, I've stood before kings. At least Philip, everywhere, almost everywhere I've gone, Philip has, is the, he has accompanied me. There are things we can't say on this pulpit, places we have been, that we will never say here. We'll never say here, because it's not about us. The reason why we were given those opportunities was because of the grace of God. So if there's anybody to be celebrated, it is the Lord Jesus that gave us the privilege. It's not something to boast about because it was not by power. It was not by might. It was by God's grace. So if there's anyone that should glory, the glory should go back to the one that gives the grace. That's why we are not going to say it publicly. But, but just obeying the will of God has made us stand before kings. Not just to stand there as a privilege. We came to counsel with kings. Kings were desperate to know what the Lord has put on our lips. And the only reason why we we're standing there was because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why not, why not, why not stay in your lane? There is greatness. There is greatness in the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom, it is your service that is your access to greatness. In fact, service is greatness. That's what Jesus taught. As I serve the body of Christ, teaching the Bible, building capacity among the believers, then God begins to promote me. Such promotion that man cannot give me. Don't run away from kingdom service because that is the sure path to greatness. Your greatness will not come from outside. It will come from within you. It will come from the investment that God has made on your life. When I finished my first degree, God said, you will not go to formal school again. And that was a blow on me because I love knowledge. I want to get knowledge. I want to acquire knowledge. And when we now, I started teaching and preaching here, our members were lecturers in BSU that were influential. They were the ones that came to me and said, why not just add another degree? I said, that's a good idea. The day the admission came out, that's where I lost my peace. And I labored for one month before the peace came back. The fact that you have people that can influence your admission. Baba gave you a, an instruction. Are you there? 
By now, I think I should have been a professor now. An old one, self, not just a new one. Because of the desire I had for knowledge. So God took that away from me and showed me his will. It was this Bible. So I studied it. I studied it back and front. I studied it for many years. Many years. If you know, it was from my pool of study I stood up to come and teach you today. If you know how many books I've consulted, how many references I've read, I've journeyed into the thoughts of many theologians on the subject of priesthood. Even though the teaching anointing is good, you, you think what I'm doing is natural. No, what I dispense, you will get it through study. <laughs> if I want to preach a good sermon, I need four days. Four days of research. Four days of research. Three days of research and one day to speak in tongues. After I finish the research, then I now speak in tongues. Then the thing will now become flesh. I have served God in this way. And I've seen how God will bring a humble dispenser of truth from the backside of the wilderness in Makodi and take him to stand among the nations. Greatness is in service. So a man that is consecrated unto God, it will be easy for him to know the mind of God. And the man that is consecrated unto God, it will be easy for him to walk the walk of holiness. That will become what will be most natural to him. In order for you to commit sin, to be a walk of the flesh, it means hard labor because you need to violate your conscience, violate the promptings of the Holy Ghost, violate the cry of the Holy Ghost. You need to put in a lot of effort in order for you to live, to walk in sin, to produce unrighteousness. Because it will be a consecrated man finds it easy to walk the walk of holiness. Because he's first of all constituted with the nature of righteousness and that nature of righteousness will compel him. Oh my God. So the first thing I do in the morning when I wake up, most of the time I wake up with a song in my spirit. That is one of the signs that my spirit did not sleep. I want us to make a commitment to God this 2024. that the description of my life will not be captured in sins and trespasses, but it will be captured in loyalty to the Holy Ghost, loyalty to Jesus, and a work of holiness that is made possible by the cross. Are you there? Let the desire to walk with you be so intense that it will best every other mundane desire that locks upon my soul. A man that is going to walk the walk of holiness is such a man that desires God above everything else. The reason why the proposal to cut corners, the proposal to sin, the proposal to violate God becomes interesting is because there is something in your heart that holds a higher place than God. The moment God becomes the idol in your heart, the highest island in your heart, it will be easy for you to seek him out, to walk with him. You become sensitive to him. What he says will matter to you. How his spirit feels will matter to you. Don't get it wrong. You are not a priest if you have not accepted the work of holiness. Because for all priests, there is a culture and it's the culture of holiness. The latitude of the temple is measured according to holiness. We have an outer court. We have the holy place. And then we have the holy of holies. If you are walking from outside into inside, then your holiness level will begin to shine brighter and brighter and brighter so that you can stand and do business with the living God. The sacrifices of Jesus has already implicated us. He gave a burnt offering so that you can live a consecrated life. He gave a sin offering so that you can experience redemption. The potential of his blood supersedes what was required to pay for your redemption. So he still has 
extra capacity which can be used for the forgiveness of sins. If you see the protocol from sin into redemption, from redemption, you have forgiveness, and then there is a demand for you to walk the walk of holiness and to access the mind of God and the will of God. It's already showing you a graph. God is taking you from the land of sin and incorporating you into his kingdom and he's insisting on the walk of holiness as you progress. Before you give God an offering, you must be sure that God can accept your person. I remember those days when I was much younger in marriage. It was my preoccupation, my intention to always prove to my wife that I was right. And I had the cerebral power to achieve that, even if I'm wrong. My mother said, if you had read law, we would have, we would have had to pack from this house and leave you. Because even as a child, I could argue. So they, they guided my hands away from law because they knew that the, the terrorism would begin from the house. They, they guided my hands. Are you, are you there? So it was my preoccupation to prove to my wife that I am right. Until I started knowing God deeply. Then I discovered that it was not just outright sin that was filthy in the eyes of God. It was also self, the ways of men. And that was more detest, detestful in his sight. Ah! Hey, I thought I was, I, I scored good records until I started going close. Then I, I knew I needed more cleansing than any man. Oh my. It is not the only, the only the unbeliever that should repent to. As you go close to God, again and again, you will repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I had to repent of, of very, very bitter anger. I had to repent of and, and lay down for his surgery to take it out. As I speak to you, I know that uh, pride has not been dealt with 100% in my life. I know it. But where it is now, it will not obstruct the will of God. <laughs> and God begins to make deliberate investments in our lives so that we look like him more and more. That is when we become qualified to transact with him. There was a man that Abraham became that made it possible for him to transact with God. He entry titles in the spirit. He became the friend of God. He became the father of faith. And he became the father of many nations. Oh my God. There is a kind of man that can transact with God. I want to be that kind of man. The Bible says that by faith, Abel, he offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he received witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. By which even when he was dead. He yet speaketh. He created a priesthood that outlived him. And the voice of his altar spoke even while he was dead. That's the man I want to be. I want to know the ways of God. I want to know it so much that I can climb my altars and cut a covenant in the spirit that will still be speaking years after I have left here. There are things that devil, the Satan will not be able to do upon the face of the earth because I caught a covenant with God. The Bible gave us a thesis proposal in the book of Hebrews, sorry, Romans chapter 4. He said what? Give me Romans chapter 4 as, as we close. Romans 4 verse 1. He said, what shall we say that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? This, this is a proposal. It's, it's a research proposal. What can we say that he found? What can we say he found? The Jews claim him to be their ancestor. Christians claim him to be their ancestor. Muslims claim him to be their father. What did he find? What kind of man is this? What kind of stature is this? If you study the book of Galatians, you, will be, you understand that redemption began with Abraham. Have you studied Galatians chapter 3? 
Do you realize that the moment you become born again, your designation is that you are a son, a child of Abraham? So the question is, what did God do with him? What did he find? How did he become such a man that God could not do without him? There were generations he showed mercy, not because of them, not because of their righteousness, but because of his servant, Abraham. Moses came into ministry and he was given a role. And God cleared his doubts quickly. See, it's because of my servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I remembered my covenant with them. That's why I called you. It means that your calling is inconsequential. It's, it resulted from something, an intercourse that is deeper than your age. So be careful. It is your cry that has made me choose you. You are standing on the foundation of their acceptance before me. How are men like that formed? Can we cry? I want to have a name in heaven. Give me a name in heaven. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Your name has not yet been registered in the courts of God. Hey, somebody needs to cry because this January, this January, we want to travel, we want to trespass into the Holy of Holies and look in the eyes of Him that sits between the cherubims. He said, Because of a maker, I will bring rain. <laughs> because of Solomon. I will bring deliverance because of Philip I will raise messengers like him in generations to come what can your name open what can your name open in the realm of the spirit I know him that he will offer it will he will order his descendants after me to serve the living God. I know him. Hey. Hey. There is something that gives you an identity. It gives you a placement such that when you call, he can move half of heaven to attend to your petition. We are not going into 2024 with blindness. We are going to invoke a capacity of grace. Hey, make me that man of stature, that man that you will look at and you will stay your hand of judgment over a nation, over a territory. You will look at my prayers. No matter how feeble they may be, and that will become the reason why you turn back the reckless wickedness that is about to play out in his territory. Give me a name in heaven. Can you cast away the filthiness? Cast away the compromise. Cast away the sin. Cast away the unrighteousness. This is the day of the Puritans. The day of the Nazarites. Men that are sold out to the will of God. Hello, 
Eloba Bracatala, Eloba Santa, Eloba Baracalia, Eloba Baraca Santa Babore. I want to have a name in heaven. Poria Sika Mela Onde. In the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 16, verse 1. I commend you unto Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is a centria, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, that he assist her in whatsoever business she has need of you, for she has been a succorer of many and myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who gave for my life, who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church which is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epenitus, who is the first fruits of Christ in Asia. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us, and Paul, comes up with a list, a list of men that should be greeted, of Aquila, Priscilla, of Apelles. The question is, will they greet you? Will they send a message that greet, greet Tony, greet Tony? The things for which the greetings should be sent were mentioned. It says, salute Andronicus and Junior my kinsmen. I hope you know it is easy to preach to the world, difficult to preach to your family. Andronicus and Junior, they were, they were from his own family. And what, what is their identity? My fellow prisoners. That's, that's, that's their mark. Who were of note among the apostles. And Junior is female. Those of you that claim that <laughs> females cannot be apostles. They were worthy of note among the apostles. They were fellow prisoners. They were also in Christ before Paul. Will they greet you? These are people whose names are in heaven. As they are coming, they will greet them. and say, ah, you bestowed much labor on the house of God. I want to have a name in heaven. I want to receive salutations from heaven. 
I want to be known in heaven. I want greetings, greetings to come. Greetings are starting. My service in the house of God. Oh, somebody cry to him. I want to be greeted. I want to be remembered. I want to have a name in the house of God. 